Are you using Reddit Pre-Med to navigate your journey to medical school? These sources of information have grown in popularity, turning them into a form of authority on topics ranging from the most reputable real estate company in your city to what kind of pet food is best for kittens ages two to six. And while information on Reddit can sometimes be helpful, Reddit visitors should be aware of the risks of taking these discussions too seriously, especially when it comes to making life and career choices. In this video, I'll discuss top four reasons to avoid Reddit pre-med, as well as similar forums such as Premed 101 and what other free pre-med resources are available to you. Hi, my name is Joseph Kafka, and I'm an admissions associate here at BMO. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe on whatever social media channel you're watching this from now so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. And as a quick tip, check out the timestamps in the description of this video to navigate to specific sections of the video that you're interested in. Here's everything we're going to cover on pre-med Reddit. Reason to avoid Reddit pre-med number one, questionable sources. Reason to avoid Reddit pre-med number two, lack of personalized approach. Reason to avoid Reddit pre-med number three, it's a source of anxiety and negativity. Reason to avoid Reddit pre-med number four, lack of accountability. Use free resources available to you. How does BMO work? And final thoughts. Now, let's get started. It is normal to feel pressure and concern about making possibly life-changing choices about your career, especially when it comes to the costly decision to pursue the medical profession. Sometimes in moments of uncertainty and difficulty, students' internal voice of reason is not enough to make the right choice. So they wonder who to turn to for advice about medical school admissions. Of course, some schools offer the services of pre-med advisors, However, these individuals tend to work with hundreds of students at a time, so most med school hopefuls have to wait for days, weeks, or even months before they can make an appointment with their school's advisor. This is when most pre-med students have no choice but to seek help on the internet. Why not? We turn to the online community for advice about pretty much everything. What color to paint our living room, where to buy car insurance, or how to fix the roof of our house. As one of the most popular online forums, Reddit is perhaps at the top of the list as a source for advice for many people, including pre-med students. To this day, users feel that discussion boards like Reddit are there to provide internet communities with the freedom to have open and honest discussions and receive unbiased sound advice. And while this is true in some cases, like most portals and public internet spaces, Reddit is often used by individuals and businesses to promote self-interest, hidden, or personal agendas. Instead of using Reddit as a space for honest conversation and advice about medical school, many people use it as a space for concealed advertisement, sounding board for their discontent, or free opportunity to spread rumors. And while Reddit can be used by anyone for any purpose, you should be aware that Reddit is not a legitimate source of information about medical school applications, or anything for that matter. When you come across Reddit discussions that vehemently promote or dismiss a medical school, MCAT study schedule, research opportunities, and so forth, be vigilant. When you are deciding between DO versus MD, be vigilant. These posts may have some hidden intent, such as advertisement or defamation. Reflect on this. Using Reddit to post ads, promos, insults, rumors, or slander is unnecessary and immature. Do you really want to take advice from someone who would waste their valuable time to write a promotion or an angry, unconstructive outburst on Reddit? Remember, it is always wise to evaluate if the sources of information you are accessing are legitimate. After all, relying on Reddit for pre-med advice is pretty risky, if not irresponsible. Thousands of pre-med students use Reddit boards to communicate and discuss the medical school application process. Extracurriculars for medical school, what kind of GPA and MCAT score is competitive this application cycle, common medical school interview questions, and more. This is understandable. Unless you have gone through the process yourself, you will have a difficult time understanding what the medical school admissions process is like. This is why pre-med students congregate in discussion boards like Reddit. This is moral and emotional support during a very difficult time of their lives. The uncertainty and anticipation would be unbearable if you did not have someone to talk to about your application, progress, and results. And while this is all very understandable, 
You should be aware that Reddit pre-med discussions are not the be-all and end-all of pre-med advice. Typically, the advice that you would get is generic and often inaccurate. People talk about their own successful and unsuccessful personal medical school journeys by sharing what worked for them, what they wish they would have done differently, what they should have avoided, and so forth. But this is their story, not yours. While you can certainly take into consideration the triumphs and failures of your peers, you cannot rely on their information to compose a successful, unique application. Remember, Reddit members do not know you and your story. Even if you share your GPA and MCAT score, or let them review your medical school personal statement, they only know the admissions process through their experience. What if the advice they give you, which is based on their experience, only work because of certain elements of their application that are not present in yours. What if they tell you that you should expect such and such medical school interview questions during your interview, but it turns out none of them come up during your meeting? Crafting your own exceptional application is a difficult task that takes a lot of planning, organization, and nuance. The same can be said of interview prep. Do not think that the admissions process is like a cookie cutter. Just because something worked for one application does not mean it will work for another. A personalized approach is key in making your medical school application stand out. As I already mentioned, working on your medical school application is a lonely, isolating task. This is why many students use discussion boards like Reddit, Student Doctor Network, and other pre-med 101 forums to compare their progress with other pre-meds who are applying in the same cycle. These discussion boards can truly be a space of support and help, but they can also serve as a source of anxiety and further isolation. Remember what I said in the previous section, each medical school application is unique and you must strive to make your story stand out among thousands of others. But students forget that their answer to the question, why do you want to be a doctor, will not be like anybody else's. Instead, when they go through Reddit pre-med, they start comparing their achievements and accomplishments with those of others. They start doubting themselves, questioning whether their clinical and shadowing experiences are impressive, or whether their medical school recommendation letters will be strong. This is the wrong approach to medical school application prep. Instead of increasing your levels of anxiety and doubt by thinking about the achievements of your peers, you must work hard on your application to convey to the admissions committees why you're the right candidate for medical school. While your competitors can brag on Reddit that they are a shoe in at the Ivy League medical schools, do not waste your time and sleep contemplating on how you compare with other Reddit pre-med users. There are two levels of unaccountability in Reddit pre-med. First, the people who give you application or interview advice are not actually accountable for your success. They do not really care if you get into medical school or not. Certainly, they are happy to help you and answer any of your questions. However, if their advice does not work, if you present them with a question like, what gives? They are not responsible to give you any feedback or answer. The best they can do is say, well, it worked for me. You'll be left angry and resentful and most likely not sure where you went wrong. This is why professional feedback and advice is preferable. A professional medical school advisor is accountable and responsible for your success. Additionally, if you do not get into medical school on your first try, the advisor will help you analyze what went wrong and how you can fix this in the future. The second level of unaccountability on Reddit is the presence of unapparent deceit in the discussion boards. This is strongly connected with the previous reason to avoid pre-med Reddit, as many of the lies Reddit users post in the discussion boards can be discouraging and dismaying to other readers. It is not always possible to verify if a user is telling the truth. There are dozens of discussion boards where unsuccessful students write that they had a 4.0 GPA with 520 MCAT average, hundreds of hours of clinical experience and research, and yet they still failed to get into any medical school. But the other side of the story the students might not be sharing with us on Reddit is that they waited to submit their AMCAS application until the last minute disregarding the nature of the rolling admissions process used in most American medical schools, or that they fail to submit the necessary number of recommendation letters on time. There can be hundreds of reasons for rejection. The lack of accountability and verifiability is a major disadvantage of Reddit. Take everything you read with a grain of salt. Forums like Reddit and Student Doctor Network are not the only and certainly not the best free resources you can use to help you get into medical school. The entire BMO team works hard every day to promote access to education 
and create free educational content for students aspiring to attend professional programs. We do not withhold any information about our methodologies and approaches in the blogs that we publish. The content you find on our website truly reflects the practices we implement during one-on-one -on -one sessions with our students. Whether it's MCAT car strategy, how to prepare for Casper, or how to prepare for your multiple mini interview, we make this information available to all medical school hopefuls because we truly believe in leveling the playing field when it comes to medical school admissions. We do not keep this information secret because we want you to succeed. Many of our admissions experts are MDs who have personally gone through all the steps in preparing their medical school application components, residency application components, and getting that coveted license to practice. They have personally prepared for the MCAT, spent weeks strategizing their med school interview answers, went over hundreds of interview questions, and know the ERAS and CARM system inside out. All the methods, tips, and strategies you read in our blogs have been tested and approved by experts. As you're watching this, you might be wondering, if your methodology is publicly available online for free, what is the point of buying your services? This is a valid question. While you can learn about our methodologies online, you cannot receive personalized expert feedback if you do not work with our consultants. The number one key to our students' success has always been the feedback and constructive criticism they receive from our consultants. Whether it's related to application review or interview prep, our expert feedback will help you improve your written and verbal communication skills. Our programs give you an opportunity to practice and develop these skills using realistic simulations. Our mock MCAT CARS practice, CASPER, and interview sessions come with detailed comments and advice on how to improve your areas of weakness. And while you can use our blogs to review sample CASPER questions and answers, interview structures, different interview question types, and more, it will be hard to improve if you do not know what you need to work on. Nothing can replace practice with realistic simulations and expert feedback. This will be the backbone of your progress and eventual success. Remember, we are always upfront about the fact that getting into medical school will take a lot of work on your end. We warn all our students that BMO is not a crash course on how to get into the program of your dreams. We do not offer a quick fix to your difficulties with medical school application components. Rather, we prepare you for more than the medical school application process. We help you build confidence, interpersonal and communication skills, and your ability to articulate your thoughts well in writing. All this is done through coaching and not by writing your personal statements for you or by giving you the correct answers to MMI questions. Your success largely depends on how hard you work to improve and whether you absorb our expert, personalized feedback and guidance. So if you are looking to hire BMO as your medical school advisor, you must realize that while we are here to help and guide you through the difficult medical school application process, you must be ready to work hard. It is normal to turn to the internet community for advice, but be vigilant about the information you encounter. Keep in mind that relying on Reddit or any other internet discussion board in making a decision about your career might not be the best idea. While the internet community can share its experience with you, your path to becoming a physician will be unique. And remember, we are always here to help. This wraps up our video for today. Check out our blog to learn more about why you should avoid pre-med Reddit and what free resources are available to you. I've included a link in the description of this video so you can find our resources easily. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, so please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. If you have any questions about pre-med Reddit that I didn't cover in this video, let me know in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.